What, if anything, do you do about the reasons that most people reject you? Well, there's nothing I can do um, from God's perspective if I honour all of God's laws and particularly the law of free will, which is a very, very important law that God has created, a gift that God's given to each of us individually, then there is nothing I can do about somebody not listening anymore. There's nothing I want to do about somebody not listening to more, any, me anymore. In fact, I fully support their desire and right to not listen to me anymore, just as I fully support my desire and right to not listen to anybody else anymore, if that's what I choose. So there's nothing I can actually do or want to do. I don't want to force them. I don't want to impel them. I don't want to convince them. I don't want to motivate them. I don't want to give them a motivational speech. I, I just want to let them make their own choice. If their own choice is to not listen, then don't listen anymore. That's fine. I'm okay with that. You can even be my friend and not listen anymore. That's the reality. I've got many friends who don't listen to divine truth and still are my friends and I talk to them about other matters. Now, in terms of trying to assist them to get over whatever is the emotional confrontation that they feel as the, reason, the real reason why they don't want to listen to me, me anymore, well, there's already over a thousand hours of, of material on YouTube which would already be helping them do that. The majority of these people have also uh, had some of their personal questions answered by me. And so really I've done all I can already to help them through the confrontation they're experiencing as to the reason why they don't want to listen anymore. And for the majority of people, it just means that they haven't been humble enough to listen to that advice or take into account those particular things. In fact, for the majority of people, they listen for a while. They haven't listened to the whole thousand hours. They listen for a while until something confronts them. And at the point that something confronts them, that's the point when they want to walk away. And my suggestion to people is that's, you're not going to grow that way. The only way you grow is by being stretched, <laughs> you know. And so, so you can't expect to grow by only listening to the things that you agree with. You know, you're never going to grow that way. So at the point where we hit something that it's very challenging, instead of immediately seeking internal justifications to not listen, mm -hmm. there's the choice to look at what's being challenged. Yes, at that point we have a choice. And most people make the choice to not listen anymore at that point. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they make that choice is because they're challenged and they don't want to be humble to what the channel challenge is. They don't want to feel it emotionally. And so rather than feeling it emotionally, they wish to walk away from what they believe is the trigger of the, the confrontation emotionally that's occurring within them. So at that point, they make a choice to leave rather than deal. Now, this is the same kind of choice the average person makes when they go and see a psychologist. They go to a psychologist and while the psychologist is telling them things they want to hear, then they stay engaged. But as soon as the psychologist tells them something that they don't want to hear, they want to run away. And they go away usually for good, you know. That is the choice that they make. And unfortunately, that proves that they really didn't want to change in the first place. Not enough to confront their emotional reasons why they don't want to change. If we're willing to confront the emotional reasons why we don't want to change, we would go through the emotion that the confrontation has caused and come out the other end of it. But most people don't come out the other end of it. They make the choice to avoid the emotional confrontation. So they leave the source of the confrontation. Now, in my case, because I'm often viewed as the source of the confrontation, because I'm stating something that they don't want to accept, they leave. And I'm okay with that, like I said. It's fine. That's their choice. They have a choice to make, and that's their choice. Yeah. My suggestion to people is this. They don't need a reason to stop listening to me. The way God's made their free will is that they're allowed to choose to not listen to me without having a reason at all. You don't have to come along to the sessions. What I notice a lot of people doing is they almost feel guilt, guilt when they don't come to a session 
or they feel guilt when they don't come to a seminar that's in their region. They feel sort of, it's almost like this macabre uh, pull towards going when they don't really want to go because they know they're going to get confronted when they go, right? And they don't really want to go, but they go anyway. And then, of course, they get confronted. And then they feel they've got to make some kind of justification for why they don't want to go anymore. And so what they do then is they start inventing reasons to not go. And most of the inventions are all around things that I've already told them are true. So, for example, the one invention that they often have is you, don't, you make mistakes. Yes, I've told you that. That's correct, I do make mistakes. But I told you that from the beginning. So why would you not want to listen anymore just because I make mistakes? Now, that doesn't make any sense. When I told you from the beginning I do make mistakes, you obviously either didn't believe me at the beginning or now you're just using that as an excuse to not listen now. Or they might say you know, to me things like, oh, I don't believe you're Jesus anymore. Well, you can't prove that. So that makes no sense to me at all. Right? You can't prove that I'm not Jesus. So how, how does that make any sense that that's a good reason to stop listening now? You were listening before, why aren't you listening now? There must be a different reason. Right? And the reality is you don't need a reason to stop <laughs> listening. Yeah. You're allowed to stop listening at any time. It's all free. It's not like you've committed to some hundreds of hours of teaching. It's not like you've entered a university degree that you've paid for and now you've got to finish even though you don't want to finish it. You can leave at any time. Nothing is going to worry. No one's going to be bothered by that. I'm still going to love you. You, you, don't, you, you can leave at any point you want. Then they say to me things like, but you don't get things, you know, you're not all-knowing. But I've told you that I'm not all-knowing. I've told you that Jesus is not all-knowing. So how is that now a reason? So forget using all these so-called excuses. My suggestion to you is this. If you don't want to come along to the session, don't come along. You don't have to give anybody a reason. You don't have to come up with fanciful reasons. You don't have to come up with illogical reasons. Stop trying to convince yourself that you have a logical reason. Just say to yourself, I don't want to go. And don't come. <laughs> For, and it doesn't matter what the reason is that you don't want to go. I like that's what I feel. That's why we make the sessions for free. People have the free will then to make a choice at any moment. They can get up and leave at any moment. They don't have to come back. And certainly we don't uh, go looking for them. <laughs> we don't go looking for them. Nor do we uh, We don't advertise them for them. They... We don't market for them. No, no, I mean, we don't go looking for people who do stop coming. Of course, we don't go yeah. knock on their door like other religions, uh, like religions do, like I've had done to me, knocking on my door saying, why aren't you coming back? And we don't do that. We, we leave people make their own choice and decisions. They're allowed to do that. Of course they're allowed to do that. That's their God-given gift. And I, it's always mystified me that when people decide that they don't agree with divine truth, then they feel that they should or that it's good or that, that, that they want to abuse us hmm. when we haven't forced anything upon anyone. No, nor have uh, we abused anyone. We've not abused <coughs> them and, and now they feel like they can't let it go. Like for yeah. me, if I want to let something go, I stop going and I move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that they can't let it go though indicates something, doesn't it? Of course, yes. You see, what happens with truth, God's truth, when it hits our soul after a while it starts resonating with our soul and we just can't give it up no matter what we want to do. <laughs> we might want to give it up, but we just can't. And for a lot of people, they get angry about that. They get angry about the fact they can't give it up. So, so instead of uh, you know, just having a good bash on a punching bag or something and letting go of all that rage that they have about the fact that now God's truth, they've heard God's truth, they can't forget it anymore, Instead of having a good rage about that, which is one thing they do need to have a good rage about, obviously, um, they would rather be in a rage with the people they heard it from, who have not harmed them. All, they've ever, you know, all we've ever done is just present truth for free to them. We've given them our time for free. How can you be complaining about that? Like, you didn't have to sit there and have, spend the time with us. You could have got up at any moment. So why are you angry about it? All right? You're only angry about it because there's something inside of you that resonates with it that you don't want to face and you don't want to feel that from an emotional perspective. So in other words, you lack humility. That's the only reason why you're angry with us, because you lack humility. That's 
I'm not angry with you because I don't have that same lack of humility. Right? I'm more humble than that. I can see that every time I get upset inside of myself, it's got something inside of myself, not anybody else to blame. And that's the difference between ourselves generally and the people who listen to us. Most of the people who listen to us get angry with us at some point because they lack humility. They lack that ability to be able to see that any feeling they have is not the result of somebody else, but the result of something they're feeling inside of themselves. Hmm. Yeah, also I'd like to say on this subject that, you know, when people withdraw from us, we still feel a lot of love for them, actually. The majority of people who have listened to us and who have left, and even the majority of people who are angry with us, we still feel a lot of love and compassion for them. We see the reasons why they feel confronted at the time and we also can understand perhaps better than they do at this point in time as to why they feel so angry with us. And we believe that at some point in the future they will possibly work through their rage and anger and actually get into a condition where they see that they were just afraid and, uh, and need to work through their fears and see that they just wanted some addictions met that we weren't meeting and maybe they can work through some of their addictions. So we actually have a lot of uh, feelings of, of love towards all the people who have left hearing the divine truth and who have left coming along to the seminar, don't come along to seminars anymore or anything like that. And it's not like there are regular seminar attendees or anything. It's just, you know, we notice when people have withdrawn from us and we don't feel angry with them for withdrawing from us. But if they treat us badly during that process, then of course there's a lot more uh, resistance in us towards having a relationship with them in the future. So when I say resistance in us, what we're waiting for is their own repentance for their angry behaviour. And what we find for the majority of people is that they are not repentant for their angry behaviour and uh, because they feel justified by being angry. They justify their behaviour they are justifying their addictions. And so for the majority of people, they're going to need a lot more humility to return to hearing God's truth or divine truth than they have had had to listen to it in the first place. Because after they've left, many people have become angry and resentful. When they become angry and resentful, they're demonstrating their lack of love and also their lack of concern for proper ethics. And as a result of that, the next time we engage with them, the very first thing we're going to address with them is their lack of love and lack of ethics. And of course, unless they've dealt with those particular emotions, they're going to find that confrontation much more confrontational than any previous confrontation they've had. <laughs> so um, I'd suggest to any person who's left uh, listening to Divine Truth and is now considering uh, listening to it again, that they look sincerely at the reasons why they left. And it actually had nothing to do most of the time with what they told us the reasons were that they left or what they believed were the reasons they left, but rather have a lot more to do with their inability to be humble to all of their own emotions, the inability to feel everything they feel without blaming other people. That's the primary reason why anybody leaves anything. Mm. Leaves anything? Yeah. Like... You know, we have two primary reasons why we leave anything. One is because we leave and we're not emotionally connected to it at all. The second reason is because we have huge emotions about it and we're angry. <laughs> now, my suggestion to people is the majority of times they have left divine truth, it's because they are angry and they're resentful. It's not because they just have no connection to it. It's because they're angry and resentful, which is not the average reason why people leave other things. People leave other things because they don't have an emotional connection to it, you mean? Yeah, most yeah. people leave other things because they don't have an emotional connection to it. Yeah. Right? And, but the majority of people who leave Divine Truth leave because they have an emotional connection to it, but they're angry. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 But they are the two primary reasons why we leave anything. We don't have an emotional connection or we do and we're angry. <laughs> <laughs> they are the two reasons, generally. Yeah. Yeah, mm. no, I agree with that. Just... Um, you know, sometimes we leave abusive situations, but 
we leave them because either we've worked we're through... angry or we don't have an emotional connection Exactly, anymore. yeah, I Usually. agree. Yeah. yeah. You know, the people who leave an abusive situation because they don't have an emotional connection anymore, that's great. That means that they're no longer hooked into mm. accepting the abuse from an emotional perspective. Yeah. Right? So that's fantastic. The people who leave emotional abuse because they're angry are still hooked into the addiction that wasn't getting met through the, addi- through the abuse. Yeah. And, uh, and that means that they're probably going to attract more abuse mm. in their future. It's not a good reason to leave anything because you're angry because you're still going to attract the events you're angry about. Yeah, I agree. Mm. It's, it's very important to point out that we do not threaten people. We don't threaten people that they must come along to our seminars. We invite them to come along to our seminars. We don't try to chain up people when they're there. We don't pressure them to stay. We don't pressure them to donate. We don't pressure them to support us. We don't pressure them to leave unless they're being abusive. There is no pressure at all that we've put on people. We don't threaten them if they do leave that they can never come back. None of these things actually occur. So the reality is that we are very, very conscious of the way in which people express their free will. Now, if they have a problem with me and my identity, they can leave at any time. But I suggest to them that a problem with my identity isn't the real problem, right? Because they don't have a problem with other people not being Jesus. So, so the problem with my identity is, is greater than that. And this is what they need to find. They need to find the real reason why they have the problem as the reason why they don't wish to listen anymore. Now, I'm not saying they have to in the sense because they can leave at any time. They have the right to leave for no reason at all. However, it's not going to be beneficial to their future to leave when you blame it on one thing when it's really another. You really want to find out why you left if you really want to progress with your future life, even if you don't want to listen to God's truth. You still want to find out why you leave Mm. and really understand the reason why you leave rather than blaming it on some illogical reason, such as he's not Jesus, which is a very illogical reason for leaving anything. Mm. So that would be my suggestion to them. We, myself and yourself, as you know, we love them still. We Mm. love people and if they want to come back at any time, we're happy for them to come back at any time. They can come back and leave and come back and leave, just as you've done many times in my life. (laughs) (laughs) And, And there's no, like animosity that's harboured against a person for doing such a thing. Just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. That's the main thing. There is little that I can do about um, a person's lack of logic or lack of love or lack of desire for truth or lack of usage of their own will in harmony with love. There's little I can do to help them in those particular situations. There's little I can do to help them be humble. I can talk about humility. I can talk about the need for them to experience all of their own emotions, which includes experiencing all of their own emotional and psychological distress. But if a person doesn't want to do that, there is nothing that anybody can do, even God can do for them. So my suggestion to a person is this. If they are confronted by something that I'm saying, including when I'm saying that I'm Jesus. Let themselves feel their emotional distress. Be humble to what it is they're truly feeling. What is the real reason why they feel the way they feel? Allow themselves to feel that. If you allow yourself to feel that, you're being humble. If you're humble, you will grow in your relationship with God. You might not necessarily want to listen to Jesus for a while, but you still will be humble in your growth towards God if you're humble to all of your own emotions. But if you blame something that is not to blame in reality from God's perspective, then all you're doing is you're fooling yourself. And therefore, you are not going to progress towards God, no matter what you choose to do and who you choose to listen to. So I feel, in probably conclusion to this session of questions, the issue of me being Jesus or not, is certainly an issue that you're going to have to resolve at some point in your future. 
only because uh, for your own uh, areas of confusion, really. But using it as a reason to not listen to truth is a very stupid reason for not listening to truth. It's very foolish. Using it as a reason to not absorb love, to live in harmony with love, is a very silly reason to not be loving. My suggestion is if you're using the excuse of my own identity in order to not be loving or not be truthful in your own day-to-day -day life or not live a moral life, then all you're doing is creating an excuse for a different thing that's real, for a different reality. In other words, you really have other reasons. You don't want to be moral, or you don't want to live in harmony with truth, or you don't want to be loving, and you're not willing to face up to that. And instead, you wish to blame me because I'm saying I'm Jesus as a reason for not listening or not practicing what you hear. I suggest to people, you don't have to practice what you hear from me. I don't expect you to practice what you hear from me. I don't expect you to believe that I'm Jesus. I don't expect you to understand my life. I don't expect you to question me. I don't expect you to listen to me. I don't expect you to come along to my seminars. And I don't expect you to donate to me. And I don't expect that you ever believe in your entire future that what I'm saying is true. I don't expect any of those things. If you think that my saying I'm Jesus means that I expect those things, then that's your emotional baggage, not mine. And what I suggest to you is deal with that emotional baggage rather than projecting it at myself. Mind you, you're allowed to project it at me as well if you wish to. You're allowed to dump it all on me if that's what you desire, but it's not going to be very good for your future because you're not being honest with yourself. So I don't know if we will have that many more questions about my own identity. I feel the reality is I've said all there probably is to say in these sessions about my identity. And I would like to now get on to subjects perhaps about Mary's identity because that hasn't been addressed at this point. So we'll probably go through some questions about Mary's identity. But we're more focused on wanting to now talk about frequently asked questions relating to truth and God and laws and principles and ethics and morality and all of these kind of truths because we feel that these kind of truths are far more important for anybody to understand mm. than, you know, issues about our personal identity. But we'd like to thank you for listening to all of our questions about um, all of these answers that we've given to your questions, in fact, about identity. And uh, hopefully they've been enlightening enough to, to confront some concepts and ideas that you have about my identity and Mary's identity. Thanks for your time. Thank you.